Hey everyone out there, my name is Devin Adams. I'm a Fortnite instructor here in Tempe, Arizona for Dynamic Worldwide, and I have another series for you guys. So uh, I have a couple of objectives that I want to do for several requests from the people who have taken my class. And uh, one of the big ones is how do we implement the SD-WAN using a Fortnite Manager? Now, I have videos in the uh, playlist on this channel that shows you how to set up the SD-WANs, but only from the perspective of the FortiGates itself. Well, what if we want to push down SD-WAN using our, you know, central management, our Forti manager up here, okay? So I said, okay, I'll do it. And I'm trying to get this done before I, I uh, have to take off um, teaching. Uh, for a week, but uh, I thought, you know what, I'll give it a shot. So I'll probably finish this hopefully sometime in the next few days. Anyways, <laughs> I'm just I'm just pushing it to the edge here, but that's okay. So for this video, though, it's going to be very simple. All right, so our goal is to eventually get our headquarters, FortiGate, over here in Arizona, right, to push down an SD-WAN to our managed FortiGates out here on our branch offices okay so we have somewhere in Miami somewhere in Dallas somewhere in New York these are licensed FortiGates because I didn't want to run into the issue of us getting um, uh, out of policies and things like that all right and this WAN cloud right here is just that PFSense box that has a whole bunch of interfaces and that's going to be our make-believe internet so um, and then these 10 200s are going to be our public IP addresses okay and this is the real internet this is <laughs> the real the internet um, this thing right here is just a natted interface out to the real internet so this is why I wanted to use make-believe public IP addresses okay so these FortiGates are actually provisioned just enough to receive a discovery from the Forti manager all right so uh, they literally have just IP addresses on them and also FGMG access on a public IP address okay and because I want to make sure that these devices can make it back to the Forti manager I did give a public IP to the Forti manager um, also, coming up here in a few videos, I'm going to um, show how to do some SD-WAN statistics with the 40 Analyzer, all right, and how to dump them there. And uh, I know that I have uh, Bob, one of my favorite uh, participants from my class in the past, asked me to play around with some client size side VPN options using like uh, things other than FortiClient, right, like AnyConnect from, from Cisco. That's going to be way down the road down the road here um, but also I want to show you how to do it through the native Windows um, device so on and so forth all right so I'm gonna be using this topology here for a while okay anyways so uh, I do have uh, things to do so I'm only gonna get one video done tonight so but um, we are going to just bring these devices into our central management platform and then the in the next video I'm gonna go ahead and push down the SD WAN settings alright so let's go on to our management PC here alright there we go and I'm gonna log into the Forta managers IP address alright so Forta manager there we are okay do 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 and nothing so far is being managed so no worries. <laughs> okay. Uh, as you can tell here, if we go to our device manager, uh, there's just not going to be anything there because we have not added any devices into our Forta manager. All right. So there's two ways that we can do this. One is a discovery, and that's when we go out here with an IP address and the admin credentials, right? Uh, it's just the FortiGates out there have to have something like DDNS or, or a public static IP address for us to find it. Okay, but in headquarters, we're actually attached to it locally. So I'm actually going to use the FortiGate to show you the second method, and that is the uh, request method. And that's when we go into the FortiGate and we request access from the FortiGate to the Forti Manager, and then we authorize it. Okay, and that's literally just our goal for for right now. So, are you guys ready? So let's go and uh, let's discover our first device. So I'm going to go to Add Device. I'm going to put in the public IP address of our Dallas branch and then the admin account of that branch. It's going to go out there to the interwebs and it should discover it. So once it discovers it, it will prompt us if that's the right device. Look at that. 
probe failed network. <laughs> you know what I forgot to do, guys? I'm I'm the coolest cat in town. Did you guys know that? You want to know why? Yeah. I forgot the uh I'm pretty sure I forgot the default gateway. Yeah. I did forget the default gateway. I am I am awesome. So Anyways, <laughs> good thing I recognized that error. All right, so uh, 10.200.1.254, and we're going to pass that off off of port 1. All right, there we go. Not a big deal. Okay, I guess I could have just put it in right there. I'm used to having those two interfaces flipped. Let's try that again. All right. Let's go back to our, I suck at these guys, I'm sorry. All right, here we go. So add device, all right. We're gonna put in 10.200.3.1 once again. Try to make all that magic happen. And hopefully you'll find it this time, and it did, okay? And it was able to do this, by the way, and let me just interject real quick. Because if we look at the Forta Manager, and I, or the FortiGate on the Dallas side. Uh, config system interface and edit port one. You're gonna see this right here that's publicly facing. Now normally these wouldn't be there, but it's a lab environment, all right? But as long as this is here on a public IP address and also uh, show, you got to at least have the default gateway so it satisfy, satisfies uh, reverse path forwarding check. Okay, guys? So other than that, that's really all you need to provision a FortiGates out there in the real world. Just ship it with a public IP address or some kind of dynamic DNS and some kind of route to tell that, hey, the Internet lives beyond this interface and you should be able to join it to the Florida manager which is which is pretty slick so but here we go all right we'll hit next and it's bringing in the Dallas uh, FortiGate for management okay so but let's go over to our headquarters FortiGate that we're locally attached to so here we go and let's log into that bad boy real quick and let's request access all right um, by the way, I'm running 623 just because I have not played around the latest and greatest. I'm on 620 for my course materials. So um, I might find some neat new things too. So, But uh, starting with 62 though, to join it to central management, we're actually going to use the um, security fabric settings. So let's go to security fabrics. Let's go to our settings. Okay. And there should be a button there that says central management all right so let's go ahead i don't know why it's selected still but let's go to 40 cloud or 40 manager all right and we'll do 10.0.1241 okay and we'll hit apply and we need to go now and re and and request that access so a couple of things all right just to make sure that everything's going to work all right, we better go to our network and we better go to our interfaces. And port 5 is actually where it's attached to the Forta Manager side of things. And let's make sure that that Forta Manager access is turned on because that way it allows that uh, management um, protocol to talk to the Forta Manager. So, and we better do that too on the Forta Manager side also. All right, now that it's done doing this, We'll say import later because there's really nothing on that Dallas box. All right. Um, and yeah, I mean, I'm not seeing anything pending here too. So let's do that real quick. <laughs> I'm like, I better make sure my, my protocol access is turned on. So uh, let's go to network, right? Um, let's go to all interfaces, routing tables. Looks like a GUI error there. Let it refresh. Oh, that's different. Come on, buddy. All right, so here we go. Let's add a device. And that's the thing too, guys. I never edit out these videos just because someone else might learn something from it. <laughs> so even though um, 
there's probably a good chance that I just have uh, one of my licensing going on in one of my other labs that I don't remember turning off. But here we are bringing in the DC, or not the DC, the New York one. All right, just like before. And this is now going to say invalid, just watch. And I'll have to fix that later, not a big deal. Okay, perfect. We'll say import uh, later. All right, and let's go ahead and get our Miami one. So we'll say add device. We'll do the public IP address of the Miami office. So uh, 7.1 and our super secret credentials. So hope I typed that in right. Yeah, that, that headquarters 40 gates just freaking out on me. Sorry about that, guys. Here we go. Miami. Hit next. Let it do its thing. All right. Yeah, that's so weird. I have no clue. Are you right there, little headquarters? What's going on? Maybe I'll stop it. You should never really do that in real life, but I'm doing it now. There we go. All right, perfect. So there's Miami. So we'll say import later because there's really nothing there, right? So, and uh, if you guys took my, my 4D manager class, you'd know that there's two databases. One is a universal database for all the ADOM objects, things like policy packages and uh, address objects, right? And the other side are the individual device database files, okay? By the way, I just realized that my AMI's not even up to date with the latest firmware version. So I don't know what's up with that, but it's still 6.2, so that shouldn't be a big problem. Um, I don't know if it will let me, but I'm going to go ahead and try to authorize this bad boy. All right. So um, I doubt it's going to go ahead and find it, though, unfortunately. I don't know what's going on with the licensing. So um, config, sys, interface. Let's edit port 5. Let's do a show. And yeah, port management is on there. We'll see what it does. So. But I'm pretty sure if there is licensing problems, right, the FortiGate's not going to like it. So, um, which isn't a big deal, meaning I can just uh, troubleshoot that off camera. So, um, but yeah, that's kind of weird. I'm not going to lie. Unless someone stole my licensing. Who out there stole my license? All right. Let's take a look here. Uh, remind me later. No, oh, I don't know. It's coming through. Usually, if there's an invalid license error, it will it will literally just sit here and, and hang. So, um, but that's still, yeah. See, it's fine. I don't know what's going on there, uh, guys. So, um, let's just try that again. I guess let's go to uh, let's go to Security Fabric. Let's go to Settings. And just like any other instructor, this has never happened before. I have no idea what's going on here. All right, so not managed. Okay, um, that is fine. You know what? I'm going to try the public IP address just for giggles. Because I wonder if I don't have that interface stuff turned on. Oh, I got a, I got an FMG access there. Okay. Well, let's take a look here. Let's go to Forda Manager. Let's log back in and let's see if it didn't successfully authorize. All right, zero, one, two, four, one. Man, I'm half tempted just to like trash this video and not upload it. <laughs> Anyways, here we go. Let's take a look though. Let's see what's going on. So it found the request. All right. HQ. Authorize. 
And if it gets past 5%, then yeah. Okay, so I think I know what what's going on. So I'm going to let that build the database because that's exactly what it's what it's doing here. It's building the device database and all of its settings. Um, if I go to my device manager and I go to my system settings, okay, uh, as you can tell, they all came through and that was the goal of this first video, right, was to get all of them managed to at least this point, okay. Um, but if I go to my system settings, all right, and I go to my network, okay, and I go to my all interfaces, Okay, uh, we have HTTPS, SSH, web services, then on port one we have HTTPS, SSH, that's fine. But if we open up these bad boys, also make sure that you have port updates and also the web filtering, all right? Now this binds IP address, right? That is crazy, I have never seen that before. <laughs> so, um, I wonder if that's something new to allow them to um, talk to a certain interface. Yeah, that's crazy. Okay. Yeah, I'll turn that off for right now. We'll we'll cross that road again because honestly, our our whole point here, right, guys, is just to make sure that the uh, uh, what you call it that we got all of all, all of our devices in. So. Uh, in the next video, though, we're actually going to do the import policy packages, okay? Then after that, we're also going to look at the SD-WAN settings. And you know what? That's something I could actually show right here if because uh, we're in system settings, all right? But I'll reiterate this. To see the SD-WAN settings on the Forda Manager, you have to come into the ADOM, all ADOMs, and you have to make sure, right, that SD-WAN is checked, Okay, I'll even do the VPN one just in case I want to do it down the road. So, and then I'll hit OK. And now it will build the objects needed to supply those settings. So now if I go to my device manager, we'll have an SD-WAN template over here that we can create. Okay, and then from there we'll go ahead and we'll push out SD-WAN settings. So. All right, guys, I know that was kind of trashy. Sorry about that. I have no idea why my, my FortiGate started wigging out on me. But we got all four of them in, and that was the goal. And I am just going to leave it at that. So, all right, guys, so next video, like I said, we'll start uh, deploying the SD-WAN from the Florida Manager. Okay, take care.